Hello, I'm Chris Menard. In this Excel video, I've got a really cool feature for you. I have a list of data that got pulled from the web. And the issue is, I've got a list of customers listed in all the even rows, row two, row four, row six. But because it came from the web, their address, which I made up their addresses by the way, are listed in the odd rows. But what I need is next to this very first customer, I need their address right next to it in cell B2. Home Depot, I need their address here. I only have five customers. I picked five of the largest employers in Georgia for this exercise. And again, I made up the addresses. So in this video, and there'll be chapters below, I'm going to use an if function. I'll use a function called is odd, but I could also use is even. So either one of those. And the third function I've got to use is the row function. I'm going to walk you through this. And again, there's chapters. So if you want to see just the end result of how to do this, go click on the chapter that has them all combined together. But for training purposes, let me show you how this works. So I'm in cell B2. The first function to teach you is the row function. The row function, all it tells you is what row you're in. So equals row, open and close parent. It just says what row you're in. It doesn't matter where you're at when you do this. So there's that function, the row function. The other function you need to know, there's a function called is odd, the number two. Is the number two odd? No. So I get false. How about the number three? Is it odd? Sure, I get true. One more. How about the number 182? That is obviously an even number, so I should get false. So is odd, and there's also is even. The number two is even, so I should get true. The number three is odd, so I should get false. So there's is even and is odd, very similar. So we showed you the row function. I showed you is even and it is odd. One more reason to know the row function real quick here. On this next worksheet, if I go to print this for a meeting, if you notice, I don't see one, two, three, four, five. The sixth one down is Jessica Curtis. I don't want to have to keep saying, hey, look at Jessica Curtis. She's the sixth one down. So what a lot of people will do is come in here and insert a column. I'm going to just name this number to keep it easy. There you go. You could do this, but I recommend you don't. One and two. Highlight them both. Autofill crosshairs. Double click. I have 35 customers. Now when I go to file print, they're the 35 customers. The problem with that is it does work initially, but if somebody else opens this file or if I'm not paying attention, it's me, and I come and do a sort by another field, I'm going to do largest to smallest. Look over at column A. It's all out of whack, so I'm going to undo. So here's an example of when you would use the row function. You know the row function is going to tell you what row you're in. So that's going to give me the number two, which it did. So my header row is in row one, which is the row above it. So equals row minus one. Crosshairs, double click, try my sort feature, sort largest to smallest. They're always numbered correctly. There is your row function. So back here now, let's go ahead and solve this issue. I need to get the uh, addresses in the city and state over in column B. I'm going to call this helper one because it's a helper column. You can name it whatever you want to. <clears throat> I'm in cell B2 equals if. So here's our if statement is odd. I could have done even too, by the way. Tab. If you recall the odd function, though, only worked with numbers. I typed in the number two. It gave me false for odd. Number three gave me true. So I have to reference the row function. 
So equals if open print is odd open print row function comma. So if you see something odd, what do you want to do? If I see something odd, I want to return it. That's a two comma. What if it's not odd? What if it's false? I'm going to do blank. That's the double quotes. Hit yes. <clears throat> it looks like it's empty and I did nothing. But look, there's the function up there. That is a nested function. Row gave me the number two is odd. Looked at the number two and the, that is false. So if it's false, it gave me a blank. So I should get the address in cell B3. And I do crosshairs, double click, fill it down or pull it down. There you go. So now one more issue, by the way, um, I need to, I need to get rid of these addresses right here. And actually I need to pull these up too. So watch this. There's actually functions in here all the way down. There's the formula bar. So I'm just going to simply highlight and copy, paste the values. That's a one, two, three paste. Now there's no functions. It's just data. I'm just going to right click and delete. I'm in cell B2, by the way. Shift cells up. Yeah, why not? Delta, there's their address. Home Depot, there's their address. So now you're saying, well, Chris, you still got over in column A their address also. Don't you need to get rid of it? Absolutely. Let's just go do a data filter. Notice my header row now has drop down arrows. I'm just going to go and tell Excel to select the blanks. Three, five, seven, nine, eleven. In case you don't know this about filters, when you're running filters and you highlight them, the other rows are hidden, but they do not get selected. So when I right click and hit delete row, it's not deleting row four, row six, row eight, row ten. Delete. And you're like, oh, Chris, everything is gone. No, turn off the filter that was showing blank. Done. How about that? Anyway, I appreciate your time. We looked at is odd. We looked at is even. We looked at the row function, which is a, I use it all the time. I combined them with an if statement to fix this. And I showed you how to use the row function also in this worksheet right here. I will put this file in the description down below in my YouTube video. Feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Have a wonderful day and I appreciate your time.